Hey, Coach, thanks for having me on. Uh, my name is Kevin Board. I'm the head football coach at New Lexington High School. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the multiple spread offense that we run here at New Lexington. Uh, a little personal history on me, a little personal background. Um, you know, played college ball at West Liberty University under um, head coach Roger Wiley, who's still the head coach there, um, and learned under uh, Gary Crow, the offense coordinator there. learned a lot from him. Um, you know, he's probably one of the biggest influence of, influences of what um, you know, I try to do offensively. Just some of the things I learned from him was a brilliant mind. Um, traveled around my first couple of years, spent a year at Bishop Donahue, a year at Ripley High School in West Virginia. Uh, the last four years was at Petersburg High School, West Virginia, helped to turn a program from 0-10 to a playoff team within four years. Um, and then this past year, I accepted the job at New Lexington High School here in Ohio. Um, and, you know, we went 6-4 uh, and four this year. Um, pretty good year for us. Offensively, we scored 390 points this year, uh, which is fourth highest in school history. So uh, it's a good year for us offensively. Um, you know, what I'm going to talk about today uh, is how we're multiple in our spread offense. You know, everybody runs some type of spread, uh, it seems like nowadays. So uh, kind of going to talk about what makes us maybe a little bit unique. Uh, really dealing with, you know, changing up our formations, our tempo, and some of those things. Um, uh, so here's my contact information. Uh, there's my school email address. Coaches, feel free to reach out for any resources. Um, you know, as we as coaches, you know, uh, nobody is creating their own things. You know, they're, they're adjusting things they've seen uh, or stealing it from somebody else and, and putting a twist on it to make it their own that, that benefits their program. So if there's anything I can do or anything we're doing that can help you uh, as a program or as a coach, uh, feel free to reach out. It's my cell phone number. Uh, then my Twitter account, uh, pretty active on Twitter. So uh, hit me with a follow. i uh, hit you back. Uh, so here's just kind of an overview of what I'll be talking about today. Um, offensive numbers for five years, why they're spread, building our spread offense. Um, you know, so uh, really going to talk about what we do. I'm going to be a little bit vague. You know, some guys, again, know what they want to do or maybe looking for a tweak. Some guys uh, looking a little bit more wholesale. If that's the case, you know, reach out to me. Be happy to help you. Again, I, I got no secrets. Uh, but very, very, very uh, broad what I'm talking today. Okay. Uh, so here are our spread numbers. They like said the last five years, um, you know, I've been a head coach for five years for Petersburg High School in West Virginia, one here in New Lex. Um, and here's the offensive numbers by year. Um, you know, you can see the biggest thing that I like to, I like to be balanced. Um, over five years, the average there up at the top uh, is 45 to 55 pass to our run to pass. Sorry. Um, and that number is a little bit skewed just because of 2016, right? It was uh, nearly 75% pass, had a sophomore quarterbacks take over and, you know, hey, listen, let's run the ball. Let's, uh, let's make it easier for him. And, um, you know, we, we really just couldn't get a run game going. So uh, we ended up throwing the ball a lot more. Um, that kid turned out to be a three-time All-Stater, was a special kid, now plays uh, football at Glenville State College, started as a freshman this year. Uh, he was a special kid. Um, you know, some of the things I like to, to highlight, our leading rusher, you know, um, it's been a quarterback twice uh, this first year. You know, had a very special kid that was able to run. Um, went on to play at Marietta College, just finished up his senior year, started all four years as wide receiver. So he was a real special kid. Um, this past year, 1,000 yard back. Uh, but they said, you, you see a little bit of, of change there, right? So I've had quarterback be the leading rusher. I've had our running back, our A, right? It's our running back and our offense. Uh, so we've had some differences there. Same with receiver, right? So um, again, based on who your guys are and, and how our personnel lines up to our offense, uh, we've had a couple different guys. We've been pretty successful that it's not just one guy, right? Um, you know, we look at 16 and 17. We had a lot of uh, ball being spread around to multiple guys, right? We had three guys with 30 catches for 500 yards in 2016, three with 25 and 400 yards in 17. This past year, we had two guys that really led the way uh, with 25 catches for 500 plus yards. Um, and uh, we had a couple other guys that were in the 200s, right? So, um, you know, we want to make sure that everybody's getting a touch. Everybody's getting the ball. I think when guys are getting touches, getting the ball, um, you know, they're less likely to take plays off. So we want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to get the ball every play. Um, and offensively, here's where we've ranked in, uh, in the school history with our total offense, right, uh, with uh, scoring, right. So uh, pretty successful there, right. Why the spread, right. Why do, why do we choose it? Why do I choose it? Um, I think it's easily adapted to the personnel, um, you know, at the high school level, you know, we're, we're not going out and recruiting. Uh, you know, you get the kids that you're in your hallway, especially at the small schools I've been at. Um, you know, small rural schools, it's not like you're getting uh, big-time five-star recruits that are transferring in, right? you got to use what you got. Uh, so I think it easily adapts to your personnel. Um, 
in the two schools I've been at as a head coach, right, we've had an abundance of athletes and a shortage of those bigger bodies, right? I'm not blessed with five to eight guys that are, you know, six, four, 300 pounds, right? I don't think I've actually had any of those, maybe one that reached 300, but he was definitely not six, four. Um, it creates a numbers game, right? We want to figure out ways to, to get our guys in space, get them the ball. Kids enjoy it, obviously, they, what they see on TV, um, you know, Last school I was at in West Virginia, WVU is the big team. They see the them throwing the ball around. They're in the air raid. They're, they're spread. They're multiple. They're getting the ball to all these guys. So uh, now I'm in Ohio. Everybody loves watching Ohio State. They're doing the same thing. So it's what those kids like to, to watch on TV. It's like they watch what they like to watch in games. So I uh, think it keeps it interesting and fun for them. Um, you know, if they play video games, Madden, it's a, a lot of them are doing that. And they're some, some of the same plays that we run, uh, they're able to run their video games. So they're like, oh, man, coach, I ran into Madden. So I know it's going to work. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Um, and it's a lot, it gives us the ability to have multiplicity with simplicity, right? And that's really what I'm going to highlight today. Uh, so when we build our spread, right, everything comes from these four uh, base formations, right? And, uh, you know, with the spread, there's only so many different ways you can line up. Uh, so we have two by one, two by two, three by one. And three by two. I've um, got a buddy in West Virginia, Darren Hayes at North Marion High School. He gives me a hard time. I run a lot of four by one as well. Um, so I guess I could put quads on there as, as well. Um, but uh, the way that we do things, right, from these base four formations, you know, we can tag a lot of different things. We can bring, um, you know, for example, in our split package, we can bring the W as a tight end, right, step the Z off. We're now in a 21 package as opposed to a 20, right? So it just looks a little bit different. Um, you know, I've ran sets where I bring the X and the W in as tight ends. Right. And for us, right, our, our plays don't change. Our concepts don't change. It's just a change to an alignment, which is going to change the structure of the defense, which is really what, uh, you know, we kind of pride ourselves on. We want to change the structure of that defense so that way we can get an advantage um, or uh, a better opening for the play that we want to run. Right. So th these are our four base formations, uh, same as most of uh, the coaches that run a spread offense, I'm sure. Uh, so our personnel, and again, this is our personnel, what we feel like, uh, what I feel like is beneficial to us and how I kind of put guys in positions. Um, you know, for you, it may not be that way, uh, but just the way we run our offense, and you'll see as we go through it, uh, our cue right, has to be a playmaker. This guy you have the highest amount of trust in. It's the guy that touches the ball every single snap, has to be a leader. Um, if he has the ability to run, it makes the defense defend 10, 11 guys rather than 10. Um, in today's game, you see a lot of these guys that are just putting their best athlete at quarterback. Um, if you've got two guys that are even or close to even and one of them's a uh, better runner with the football, I think that, you know, he has the advantage just because, uh, like I said, you, you make the defense defend 11. If I'm playing a team that's got a quarterback that runs a six flat 40, right, we want to make sure that we, we send pressure at him, right? So the, the, the guy that has the ability to run, um, you know, I think that they, they have to defend you a little bit differently because he can make things happen with his feet. Our X receiver, right? This is the backside in all of our uh, three by one formations, right? So this guy has to be able to win our one on one battles. Um, in 2015, 2016, I had a guy that was uh, a speed guy, right? He was a 100, 200 meter placer at the state track meet. Um, 17, I rotated a couple guys. 2018 was a guy that was just more physical and could out jump a lot of guys, right? So again, just tr creating that one on one matchup. Um, then this past year, uh, he was a guy that just had sure hands. Uh, we lost our uh, our starting senior leader uh, after the first week. He sprained his ankle, was out several weeks. Uh, so then we rotated two guys. One was six eight, uh, real tall guy, target, and then the other was a freshman. The freshman ended up, um, you know, really just catching everything we threw his way. So he became kind of the starter there. Uh, but again, for us, we want to create multiplicity, right? So uh, this can be a tight end type kid, right? So um, you know, we flex this guy and it's a tight end a good bit just to give a different look. Our ZD is our best hands and a true receiver, right? So, um, you know, some guys say, you know, we don't have all the, we don't have four receivers to run a spread, right? That's great, right? If you've got one, put them at Z, right? Put a tight end at X, a tight end at W, right? Two running backs, you're now at 22, right? You only have to play one receiver. Um, but in our offense, this guy, four out of the five years has had the most catches, right? So this is a guy that we want to make sure we have an athlete and somebody that can make plays. Uh, doesn't have to be the best speed, doesn't have to have the best hands, but has to be a guy that can make plays. This past year was a kid that uh, uh, placed last year in the state track meet in the 400, qualified in the one, the four, uh, super fast, legit 4445 speed, uh, just signed to, to go on to tip and run track. Um, our W has to have the ability to go up to the middle front facing zones. Uh, this is a good spot for a basketball guy. You know, uh, we see a lot of zone coverage, so it's got to be a guy that can kind of find windows, kind of sit down, pivot around, uh, just like a basketball Court, right? We also move this guy in as a tight end occasionally, right? Um, just depends on our personnel from year to year. 
our A's, our running back does not have to be overly dynamic guy, right? Uh, the way I call offense, you know, the football gods created the game. They gave you four downs to get 10 yards. So we're going to use all four of those. I hate to punt. It's the least for, favorite formation for me. Um, so if we can get a guy to get two and a half yards of play, right, then we're sitting pretty, right? If you can get three yards of play, we only need two the next time. So um, this, again, I've shown you I had two years where a quarterback was a leading rusher because I didn't have a great running back or I didn't have a great running game. Um, you know, this guy, if he's special, it makes the offense really go, right? But it does not have to be a dynamic guy. It can be a fullback if your quarterback's your runner, right, where you can run some quarterback runs, Q power, Q zone, stretch, all that stuff. Um, so, uh, again, if, if you can get two, three yards of carry, I think this is a, a, a guy that it will be just fine for you. Now, our position is our wild card. Uh, you know, and this really is whatever fits you best, right? This guy right here uh, can be your second running back, right? So you can go split backs, have two running backs in the game. If you've got two great ones, uh, it can be another tight end. It can be a fullback. It can be the uh, the H back sniffer type player you see in college football a lot with the eleven personnel like Clemson, Ohio State run. Uh, or it can be a fourth wide receiver, right? From year to year, this changes. Um, you know, last year I had uh, this past season I had it as a uh, a receiver, right? That play a little bit of running back. We'd bring him in the backfield occasionally because he can make some things happen. Um, I've had to be more of a tight end kid. That hey, every time you're in the game, line up is tight end. Uh, other times it's been that flex back or whatever. So. Uh, it's just how we set our personnel up. And again, we want to talk about versatility, right? We use a plethora of formations and only a handful of plays, right? So uh, I'm the guy that's got a handful of plays, but a million different ways to line up and make you have to, to scheme up how you want to defend each way. Uh, so we want to formation the defense to a favorable look, and it's going to allow us to control how a, a defensive coordinator defends us, right? So, for example, um, a three-by-one open set, right? I guess I'm filming, I'll show you here in a minute. Uh, a three by one open where the X receiver backside one on one, right? If he split out, you're going to get one look. But if you bring him in as a tight end, they're likely going to roll a safety, drop the corner, and give you a completely different look that it gives you a softer run box there to the edge. All right? You see us run a lot of Q stretch to that. Um, formation adjusters to us are just one more tags, right? So we may go uh, tight or flex or stack. And I'll show you some of those tags here in just a little bit. Um, and again, we I pride ourselves on, you know, we want to score from different formations. We want to be in different formations, give us different looks, right? Something exotic. Some may, some of them are one call a game. Some are one call a week. Some we won't call for three more weeks because we want to put it on film. Make you have to think about it, but we won't show you. Um, in 2018, right, my fourth year at Petersburg, we scored from 23 different formations, um, a handful of plays. This past season, first year of the, the offense here, we scored from 22 different formations. So, Again, in the first year, right, we're, we're scoring from that many different formations. Doesn't mean we didn't run more than that, right? Obviously, we did. Uh, but they were so simple that the kids were able to pick it up in a year. So uh, we want to find our way to or find a way to get our best guy a favorable matchup, right? That's, that's the game of football, right? Get the ball to your best kid and, and let him make something happen. Uh, and this gives us answers, allows us to adapt year to year with strengths and weaknesses, right? The big thing, right, for us, we want to cater to the kids we have, right? Every year, I don't have four great receivers and one great running back, right? Again, we talk about not being able to recruit. you got the kids you got, right? So some years you may have two tight ends. Some years you may have three tight ends. Never in my life have I had that, right? But if I did, right, we could run that. Um, and our, our formations, our plays, right, wouldn't change, right? Our alignment might, but our plays will not. All right, so we can talk about our offensive install, and I'm going to get to our, our complete install, how I do it, how we do it. Um, you know, and again, I think that you could take this and make it your own. <laughs> Uh, so some things to keep in mind, there's literally thousands of plays, right? And I was the, uh, I was the guy that wanted to run all thousands. That was my first year as a head coach as the play caller. I took over a head coaching job when I was 24 years old. Um, and again, you, I think you're naive to think, man, I'm, I'm really good, right? I just got this head coaching job. My first game, I think we lost 52 to 13. Uh, I got crushed at home. It's like, man, okay, right? We're, we're, we're doing too much. And that first season, I said, you see a game on TV, like, ooh, I like that play. Right, you throw it in, then you're throwing another play in, then then you're drawing some up in the dirt, and uh, what you become is you can become a jack of all trades and a master of none, right? Um, and over the past couple of years, I've done a little bit better of, you know, slimming our playbook up, kind of trimming the fat to where you know we're getting the real meat and potatoes in there that we're not getting so much fluff, so much extra stuff that you know we're not actually running as much. Um, questions, other things, other things to keep in mind, right? What can your kids handle and execute, right? If they can't handle the whole offense, right, cut it back, right? be great at five plays, right? That reminds me to remember the Titans, right? You got six plays, right? Playbook kind of thin, right? They run those six plays. They're great at those six plays. And no matter what you do to line up against it, they can be great at it, right? Um, and then think about how many times you have to rep something to be good at, right? Uh, we as coaches, we don't just say, hey, we're going to try this play out. And if, uh, if it looks good in practice, we're going to run in a game, right? You practice it, you practice it, you practice it because you want to make sure that in the game, the kids know exactly what they're doing. They've been there before. 
Um, you don't just say it on, on game day, hey, let's try to do this, right? I don't think you do that as a good coach. Um, so it takes reps during summer, during practice, uh, and then games. So uh, in 2017, I really had that personal epiphany. Um, you know, we had a very young, inexperienced line the year before. We graduated five seniors uh, on the offensive line, really didn't have a guy that had significant playing time. So we really just were starting from scratch and a whole new offensive line. And we really struggled converting that third and fourth down and, and one to two yards, right? We didn't have that go-to run, right? Because we were running in buck sweep and trap and power and counter and inside zone and outside zone and, and jet sweep and all these different plays, right? But we didn't have one that if, if the kids knew it was third and one, we had to have a yard to get the first down and, and maybe uh, ice the game clock, right? We didn't have a, game, a, a play we'd had for that, right? From third and fourth down to three, four, five, six, seven yards, they knew exactly what pass play we were going to, but we didn't have that go-to run. Uh, so we really cut the playbook down, got more reps at those plays that we had, the fewer plays, and we got better at those plays um, in 2018, 2019, right? Significantly better in the running game because we had fewer plays. Right. And the ideology or the ideology of simple equals play faster, right? Less plays equals less thinking. Less thinking means play faster, right? So we want to play as fast as we possibly can. All right. So um, I, I follow the air raid install principles. Huge fan of Mike Leach. Um, you know, when I was a, a kid in high school, I was always drawing up plays. I, I knew from the get go that I want to be a high school football coach. Um, so I, I was studying plays, I was watching videos um, and designing all this stuff and went to college, right? drew everything every every day the coach would give us the practice script and i'd take that home i draw it in my notebook still got those notebooks where i've got all these plays drawn up um but one of those things that really hit me was this three-day offensive install that uh, the air raid guys use right um and what it does is day one you have a set of plays day two you have a set of plays day three you have a set of plays um and on that individual day right you're just repping those things right so each day we're going to include a run play right or two excuse me a quick game some dropbacks, screens, and RPOs, right? So day one, we have a series, right? I'll show you on the next slide. Um, day two, day three, right? After three days, 90% of our offense is installed, right? Our base offense, right? So that means our base runs, quicks, drops, screens, and RPOs. Um, after three days, we have all that in. And we've got a ton of reps because we cut the number of plays down per day. So they're able to get a ton of reps at those. And a lot of our stuff is going to marry to each other to where we're really getting extra reps at it, right? And then on day four, we go back to day one schedule, Right, we might add a couple of tags. Okay, so here's our three-day offensive install. Um, again, day the first day of inside or uh, day the first day of offense. Right, these are the plays we're running. Right, we're running day ones. Right, so our run play that we're going to put in is inside zone. That's the run play that we hang our hat on. It's the play we feel like you know if we need to run. Right, this is the one we're going to. Um, this year, it averaged nine and a half yards a carry. Um, part of that is uh, the offensive line part of that is the quarterback making the read. And the other part is that we had a very special running back, right? You'll see in the clips that uh, the guy toting the ball is, is a special kid and uh, going to hate to miss him or hate to lose him after this season. He's a senior. So he's graduating, still looking for a home. So if any college coaches see this and see this kid run the ball, man, reach out. The kid can make a, a, um, a great running back for you for the next four years. Uh, we put in our quick game, right? So all hitches, uh, three drops, mesh, snag and cross. These are our three most called pass plays. Um, and most successful as well. Uh, screen game, we throw bubble bubble screen to the outside, right? So that's kind of like our outside run. Um, and then we tag our inside zone with hitches, right, for our RPO for the day, right? So we're marrying our run to our quick game of that day. Seven plays. Day two, we come back, seven plays. Day three, seven plays, right? I'm not going to read all those to you. You guys can see that. Feel free to screenshot that. Uh, if you have any questions about it, again, let me know. Um, and then, like I said, after day three install, right, um, we go back to day one and we start all this over. And now we start to add some tweaks to it, right? So we may add pitch and go or bubble and go, right? Uh, that we're, we're repping the same plays, but we're adding tiny twists to it. Now we're getting to those specific nuances that make it look like a different play to a DC, right? But in reality, right? So if we go uh, mesh, for example, right? We have a tag to, to tag the, uh, the Z receiver on a post instead of a, a corner route, right? So a small tag, right? Might look like a different play. We might tag wheels to it where our A and H are now running wheels instead of flat routes. Right. So it's going to look like a different play, a different scheme. Right. But in reality to us, it's the same thing. We're just changing one or two guys at a time. Right. Alignment doesn't change our routes. Right. So formation, our success. Right. Again, I just talked about a little bit less plays equals more reps um, and more formations are going to equal more reps, more work for the D.C. Um, you know, talking to some guys in the offseason, they're like, man, you're paying to, to do right. Did you did you actually run plays or formations just to run them? So, yeah, sometimes, you know, we want to show it on film and then we're not going to show it again for three weeks. Right. Because, again, I want. I want guys to have to 
to look at us and have to spend a lot of time figuring out, you know, what they're going to pick and choose, um, you know, how they're going to defend us, what formations they feel like are our top ones. Right. Again, obviously you have some base ones there, but there are some formations that we run that really put a DC in conflict, right. That they have to kind of choose and really spend time on it that they may have thought us run it last week, five or six reps. It's like, Oh shoot, this could present problems. So they spend all this time working on it. And we may not show it that week, right. They just wasted all those time on that, that other formation. Right. So let's play as more formations. Uh, for us, the assignments, the reads don't change play again. We want to play as fast as we possibly can. Um, you know, when I was studying again, as a, as a high school kid, college kid, when I'm studying these playbooks that are online, you go online, down these download playbooks and learn them and like, man, I'm really smart. Right. Um, you know, you see a lot of these spread playbooks, right? If you're in two by two, right, your H receiver may have a uh, a flat route, right? But if you go three by one, he may have a, a seam route. And if you go empty, you may have a completely different route, right? So some of these plays, right, that these guys are, are, promout, are promoting and putting out there, right, they've got three or four different routes they have per play, right, that they have to remember, right? For us, we want to make it simple, right? If anytime we run match dependent, if we're in three by one, two by two, three by two, uh, you're, you're running the same route. Right. So I think to me, that makes it easier for the kids to to memorize, hey, on these nine drops, I have the, these nine routes. Right. Uh, so our base offense, again, I call this our base. Right. This is what we really rep and practice and play uh, in games and practice. Right. Some of these we add and, and uh, subtract different years. Right. Uh, and then we'll also obviously add our tweaks and nuances. Right. We really have three base runs right? inside, outside zone and counter. If I have that nice fullback H back kid, we'll add power. Um, and we ran a little bit last year. We ran some power read. Um, the inverted power read where the quarterbacks to dive in and the, uh, the running backs, the outside zone guy, um, four, four quick games, right. Which I highlighted on the last page. Then, uh, slant bubble was added there as well. Nine dropbacks. We never take all nine into a game, right. We're going to take four to five that we like versus what they do defensively. Right. But we have the opportunity that, Hey, you know, we don't like this route, this, or this concept this week. Let's add this one instead. Right. Cause we've repped it. The kids know it. Uh, three to four RPO based on our three or four base runs. Then we have our three screens, right? Total there at the high end is 24, right? But really we're, we're three, seven, 16, 19, 22 plays, right? So 22 total plays that they have to remember, right? We're just going to change up the formations, right? So our formations add complexity, right? We have a right and left for all formations. We flip our receivers. We don't keep them on the same side. Um, we can add a tight end, a fullback, or a flex tight to bring them in as that H-back sniffer type. Right, we can stack our receivers. We can bunch them. We can uh, go to the pistol. We can go down, which puts our two backs on the same side. And then you add motions, right? So again, we want to create this big, elaborate picture for a defensive coordinator to look at and for a defense to look at, right? Uh, but for us, really, it's the same stuff. It's just we're uh, repping it over and over and over again. All right, so here's a perfect example for you. Uh, this is our curl flat concept that we run. Um, you know, for the air raid guys, it's kind of based on the, uh, the Hank concept, right? Where you got curls, uh, you got that middle sit, and uh, then flashed by your other two receivers. It's another concept that we took, uh, or I took from my offensive coordinator in college, Gary Cole, uh, but adapted a little bit, right? This has since changed our W, right? Our WR uh, inside slot guy now runs a dig seam route, right? And this is one of our routes that actually is side adjust, right? So, again, you know, we want to create options. We want to have tools in the toolbox for whatever defense gives to us, right? Uh, so our X and our Z, the two yellow circles on each concept, you see it's got a, a curl, right? It looks like a hitch, but it's a curl, right? Or a go. So if that uh, cornerback wants to play jam, wants to play press up on our face, right? We don't want to run a curl into a jam corner, right? He's sitting there for it, right? So we're, we got the geo rule, right? We're going to take off, get a positive outside release, right? In, right? So they're, right? Or cover two likely, right? So if they're cover two, we're going to adjust, right? We got a vertical here, vertical here. Cover two likely have two high safeties, so the W is going to split those. So now we've got three deep routes on two deep receiver or two deep defenders, right? We should have the matchup there. If they want to give us a cover three shell, right? Soft corners, one high free safety, right? We were going to curl up, right? We're going to run a dig, right? Between the two middle backers, another curl, right? Plus our two flats, we've got five underneath defenders first, or five underneath receivers for four underneath defenders, right? So again, we're creating options for ourselves. Uh, to put us in the best position, right? So they, this is one of our plays that side adjust, right? But the big thing that we take from this, right? We want all our concepts to look the same regardless of formation. So here's six completely different formations that regardless of what the defense does, right? The picture for the quarterback looks the same. And that's the most important thing to me is that the quarterback has the same picture of where our guys are going to be that rep. It doesn't matter how we adjust, right? We can bring the W in as a tight end. He's still running his big seam read, right? X and Z always going to be outside 
Uh, we always can have a curl flat to the outside there where we can high low the outside backer. All right, so game planning for success, right? We're going to try to figure out through film study how do they defend our formations, right? Uh, because our, our team tends to throw the ball a little bit more than some of the other teams in our league, um, you know, sometimes we only get a rough idea from that, right? And if you do throw the ball a little bit more than the other teams, you, you've seen that, you know, defenses play you slightly different than they play the other teams they've seen on film, right? You may get a little bit softer coverage because they don't want to get beat over the top. Uh, you may get a completely diff different uh, coverage shell, right? Because they just want to play you differently, right? A lot of teams will play cover three for the run, right? But switch it up for pass. Uh, so sometimes we aren't sure, so we have to assume. Um, and that's really how I attack um, a defense or kind of, um, you know, uh, play poker with them early on, right? Is you know, when we script our plays, when I script our offensive series, right, for starting a game, I usually come out and, and let's line up three or four different formations. Let's see how they align to it. And then let's see what we like from that, right? Um, our favorite, what are the defense's um, favorite fronts, blitzes, and coverages? When do they use them, right? And if we change up our tempo or speed up our tempo, can we keep them vanilla, right? What that means is, uh, you know, if we play our fastest tempo, which again, a lot of guys do play this fast tempo or change up their tempos, right? What you get when you play really, really, really fast is a defense has to play basically just one coverage, right? The defensive coordinator doesn't have time to get a big elaborate uh, fire zone, roll safety coverage in there or change up the front, right? Because we're going so fast. Right? I want to snap the ball right now and go. That's when I feel like we're most dangerous is when we're playing as fast as we possibly can. All right. Then the last thing we look up is matchups, right? Who's their stud that we should avoid, right? We played a team this year, Tri-Valley, um, had a defensive end. Guy Bradshaw was an incredible player, uh, defensive player of the league in the year, or defensive player of the year in the league. Uh, you know, we wanted to avoid him at all costs. We tried to run away from him, right? He still made plays. It was uh, incredible. All right, then who's the guy we need to attack, right? Is there a corner that's a little shorter we can get jump balls on? Is there a guy that, that plays softer because he's, you know, a younger guy that, you know, isn't quite ready? Is there a guy we can attack, right? That's what we want to do matchup-wise. And again, where's our best guy and how can we get him the ball? All right, so tempo, and this is really what I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about here with our uh, with our film clips, right? Uh, we want to control the speed of the game, right? Doesn't mean, doesn't have to mean as fast as possible, right? But that's the way that I like to call a game. I think that when you're playing fast, that um, you know, defenses have to play pre, or plan for the speed of the game as well as what you're doing in the game, right? Uh, so the old the old guys, right? The old guys that you know learn from in high school and, and before that, right? If the opponent's better than you, we want to slow the game down, right? We want to control the clock, right? We want to limit the the opponent's possessions, right? And if we're better, we can speed it up, right? But if you, if you're a team that's not as good as your opponent, right? You want to slow it down, cut the possessions, right? Uh, to me, right, I think the speed at which we play has to be prepared for, right? And I think if you practice fast, you play fast. Um, you know, and what you do by speeding up the game, right, we're going to extend it and we're going to get more possessions, right? So we're going to have more opportunities to score. Um, you know, and a perfect example of this, my, uh, shoot, my second year as head coach, right? We were down 27 to 6 at halftime to our uh, our rival, 20 minutes up the road, Um you know, part of that's at uh, part of that's because we had some guys that were uh, suspended for the first half for some things, um, but because we were able to push the tempo, they were much bigger than us, much stronger than us, uh, much more physical up front, right? Our guys were very small, but we were quick, right? So we really pushed our tempo in the second half and ended up winning the game 33 to 30. Had we slowed the game down, right? Um, you know, we're, we're looking at less possessions. We needed every single one of those possessions to come back and win that game. So that was actually our first win over that rivalry and. Uh, a decade, right? So I uh, ended up winning that game 30 to 33 to 30. Um, but again, I think a lot of that was because we really pushed our tempo and just gassed the other team's uh, defensive line, right? If I had the film on it, I'd show you these guys are just diving and um, and things at the quarterback, and it just looked like they were just gassed, right? Um, and I'll show you some of that tempo as well um, in one of our videos, All right? We always want to have a change up, right? I don't think you can play just one speed. I think that the word tempo means you want to be able to change the speed of the game, right? Uh, so we have a couple different tempos. Um, you know, we have a, as fast as we possibly can, right? We got a little bit of a, uh, a speed up, and then we also have our check with me system, right? And this is the way that, you know, because guys are saying, well, if you always go on the same count, right? If you always go on one, right, then they're eventually going to jump the snap and, and get a play for a loss. Yeah, eventually they will, right? Uh, and if you see that, right, there's ways we can counteract that. We can hit them with our check system where, hey, we go with dummy cadence, right? We get a lot of offsides, and you'll see that in our film as well. Um, and you're also able to, to hit them with their screens because they think they can jump the snap, right? So let them run past you, right? Let's catch them in the, in the screen game, right? 
Uh, so you have to be able to play faster or slower, right? Play faster when you want to, play slower if you need to, right? That four minute situation. Uh, but bottom line is you got to rep these regardless, right? Um, you know, some guys say, man, we, we can't go as fast as we'd like because we're a small school, right? We don't have enough guys or all our guys are two-way players, right? Majority of our players have been two-way players over the years, right? I've, I've been very lucky uh, to have just some some extremely good kids and hardworking kids that no matter what came across, they want to go out there and play, right? But you got to have your best 11 on the field, right? And a lot of times your best 11 at a small schools on the offense and the defense, right? For you to be good at this, it, to be able to go fast and wear teams out, you got to practice it, right? You got to practice your tempo. Um, you know, when we call, when I call offense during the week, right? I'm on the sideline. We're going no huddle. We're going up and down the field, right? When we score, we're just turning around, right? But I don't, I don't have them huddle every play. I don't call a play, then walk up to the line and let's run it, right? We want to go, right? It's what we're used to. Uh, that's how we play. So we got to practice that way to be really good at it, right? So I'll stay on the sideline. They look over, get the sign, let's roll, right? Um, again, I like to play as fast as we can, right? We talked about this already, right? But it can create defensive miscommunication, misalignments when you're going really, really fast. Again, they, they have to be able to get a call from a DC, see your formation aligned to it. Offense is easy. You know where you're lining up. You know what your uh, your job is, right? You just got to go out and do it. Uh, so you'll see one of the clips, right? We're playing um, as fast as we possibly can. You're going to see a lot of guys, right, hands on hips or lining up wrong or walking around or, or not set before the ball is snapped. Right, that's really where we, I think, can excel, is that we're we're getting the ball snapped really quick and defenses aren't set, right? Um, so that, that's one of the things I think we're we're pretty good at, right? So you'll see that. Now with that too, right? You're going to have some bad plays, right? So sometimes, right? You're going to see uh, one of the plays versus one of our opponents, right? We're trying to go fast and there's a guy misaligned at first and he flips over at the last second and he actually flips over and gets right into position, right? But more times than not. Right? If you're going to catch them misaligned, you're going to get a big play out of it just by your speed, right? Every play call you call isn't going to be the best call, right? But you can make it a good call by going fast, right? So we try to snap the ball every eight to 12 seconds. I've never actually timed this, um, you know, but I, again, I, we want to go fast, right? So no time for elaborate calls on either side, um, especially not the defensive side, right? They can't dial up a, a front, a blitz, and a coverage, right, in that amount of time, right? So it's a lot of base coverages, right? This helps us up front with being smaller, right? But we, we usually are quicker than the bigger teams we face, right? And we can gas those other teams bigs that have to play two ways as well, right? Because a lot of teams, again, if you get that big guy that's a stud, right? He's your offense and defensive lineman. So uh, if we can gas that boy, right? Not only are you going to be slower on defense, right? But on offense, you're not going to be able to pound it behind it, right? So our, our calls have to be simplified for us to be able to go fast, right? So a base call for us would be right triple go, right? So this means we're going to go three by one to the right, um, and it's our four verts concept, right? So again, we know where our landmarks are on four or on, on verticals, right? So we have two signs. We have a, a sign for the formation, right? It's a right-handed sign. Um, and then a, a sign for our play call, right? So we have two signs. We can get that in very, very quick. Kids can line up, kids can run it, kids can execute it, right? Um, and then a lot of people, you know, they want to ask you, well, can teams steal your signs? Yeah, absolutely, right? We look at the, the Houston Astros did this to the most extreme case, right? Uh, but high school teams, right? They got to be able to see your sign, right? Look down at their paper. All right, last time he touched his hat, right? What did they run? Oh, there it is. He ran this, right? They have to yell that out to their kids. The kids have to hear that, recognize what he's talking about, process it, check the formation, line up to it, and then be able to execute it. By that time, we've already snapped the ball, right? So, again, our tempo helps to keep uh, teams from stealing signs as well, right? So I'm going to flip over here and show you some clips. Right? I've got three series of clips. Um, two of them deal with our uh, our tempo, right? So the first one is um, early in the season, I believe, right? We're going as, uh, as fast as we possibly can, right? We want to go fast, right? It was our, our week four opponent. We're down. Uh, we ended up losing the game, right? A close one. Um, but we were much better in shape. You'll see, right? We're lining up and going Their Their guys are standing around and looking to the sideline with their hands up, the, the shrug hands that all of us coaches hate to see, right? What, what do you mean? What, what's going on? Um, and this is, again, we're, we're trying to make a comeback here. We drive uh, 95 plus yards and go down and score. And a lot of it was because of our tempo. Uh, the second series I'll show you is our check system, right? So, um, you know, every time we, we face a team, right? If it's new, it's first series, right? We want to kind of, play them out, see what they're wanting to do, just like in boxing, right? You just don't go for the haymaker a lot of times, right? You're kind of playing around, seeing what their footwork's like, what their hands are like, right? Uh, and what the, and how they want to attack you, right? So we kind of feel them out. And then from there, we build our game plan for what we want to do, right? 
And then the third one is just a, a clip of, or 10 clips that kind of show our formation variability within uh, a game, right? So I went through a game and picked through some, right? Got 10 of our formations that we ran. There's a couple more that I didn't put on there. All right, so coaches, here's our uh, clips right here. I got, like I said, I got three series of clips. Uh, the first one here, right? This is our week four opponent, right? This is uh, early on the season, obviously. Um, you know, we're down at this point, right? So we got to play a little bit of a hurry up, right? Because we got to go down and score, right? This is third quarter um, towards the end of the quarter, right? Uh, really, the thing I want to highlight with this video clip, right? Again, it's just a series we go from, uh, looks like one of the forces, a 96 yard touchdown scoring drive uh, that we put together in the third quarter that we're trying to make a comeback here. Um, and, and you're going to see really, which I want you to notice from this, this is our fastest speed possible. We're not doing any checks here, right? We're just going, right? So you're going to notice guys in blue, right, are standing around or, or slowly getting to where they need to be, right? We're trying to snap the ball, right? Uh, so as we go through here, right, you'll see the title up the top, right, what we got, right? So it's just a uh, power, right, that we read the defensive end, makes a play, right? And he likes a little shoulder, right? He thinks he's a tough guy, right? Very good athlete, right? So there's six yards. Hey, we're lined up, right? So here's one of our formations that we do a lot, right? It's our quad set, right? So we've got four by one, a non-traditional set, right, which is going to cause a non-traditional alignment from the defense, right? So we see, right, we've got uh, this team might play a little bit of two-man on us, Right, you see this other safety trying to roll over late. Um, you're going to see a little miscommunication between our guys. Again, it's it's game four, right? We're we're tired a little bit. It's the first game, really, that we were pushed to the brink. Right, we had to play our starters for for all four quarters. The first three, we actually played uh, extremely well and had running clock by the end of the game. Right, so this is our first full one. Right, I ended up taking a guy off the field. Right, so we're coming back now. Right, we line up in four. Right now we're going to motion our running back in, right? We got to adjust, right? We're going to run our, our favorite uh, pass concept there. Sits down right between the inside outside backers. First down, we're rolling, right? Again, notice the guy still getting set when we're snapping the football. That's what we want to take from this. All right, again, every play is not going to be a home run, right? Um, you know, we, we'll take our two, three yards of play. That's all we need, right? So here we've got numbers advantage, right? They don't have that safety all the way over, right? We get motion, right? End up getting some confusion there. All right, hit our running back to the flat. Thankfully, caught the ball. Um, uh, sometimes it was a uh, not so sure. All right, so here's a, a three by one with a tight end set back side. Right, again, we're looking to the sideline. You know, coach, what do I do? What do I do? Right, so we're backing up. We're rolling coverage. Right, power that way. Nice big gain there. Right, again, trying to move the ball here late in the game. Right, left triple. Right, we go to the left on our right screen. Got ops off coverage because, again, they're not lined up, right, because we're going super fast, right? I wish you could see in between how fast we're really going. Um, you yeah, know, but we throw this bubble screen out there. Their guys aren't set. Defensive linemen are standing around, um, and we're able to get a big chunk of yards there. <clears throat> and here we bust a big one, right? They had to take their defensive lineman, right? This is their, uh, their nose guard coming off the field here. Um, you know, he's a big boy and really did a lot of, of good things for them inside, right? Uh, big body, played very well, only played on defense for them, right? Didn't play offense, right? And we've gassed him, right? He's got to come off the field, right? Which opens up our run game a little bit better, right? Again, he was a very good player, right? But he's absolutely gassed, and you can see that there, right? So we're able to bust off a, a big run there. Again, that's our special running back was talking about, right? Let's throw our bubble screen again, get outside, get some easy yards, right? And again, we just you guys slowly get into the play. You're not seeing breakneck pursuit to the football, right? These guys backside, right? They're tired. They're not trying to sprint there, right? They're trying to save what energy they got because it's late in the game, right? Then they have to speed up. Hey, it's our outside zone. Running back punches it up in there, right? Probably hurdles at some point. You'll see he likes to hurdle. He's a hurdler. Hey, three by one with a tight. Right, run our mesh concept there. Get a little bit of cross action, right? Really don't get a whole lot of yards, right? It's just okay, right? We're just third and one, right? able to get this first down here, right? And we go empty, right? Empty is a, is a great set on the goal line. I know a lot of guys like to pack it in and, you know, we got to pound down their throat, right? We go empty a lot because what, what do most teams do versus empty? You don't have a whole lot of checks for it, right? Most times it's some type of man, right? Cover zero, right? We've got a hat for a hat and we're playing our, our six man box, right? If we do that, that's great, right? We're going to run Q counter, pull our backside two guys, knowing that your defensive end's tired, right? And quarterback's going to go in untouched here for six, right? So uh, very good series there, right? Uh, and that's just going to start back over, right? So that, that's a, an example of us going as fast as we possibly can, uh, which I like to play. All right. Our uh, second clip, this is week 10, right? Week 10 of our season. Um, 
last game of the season, uh, playing a team that if they win the game, right, they're heading to the playoffs, right? If we beat them, right, they're they're out of the playoffs, right? So we end up winning the game uh, as the best game we played all season offensively. Uh, we moved the ball very, very well, uh, but just had way too many turnovers. I think we turned the ball over probably four or five times. It was a cold game, uh, some fumbles, some picks. Um, but defense played lights out, right? It was our best game defensively, and uh, we were able to come away with the win. Right, but what I want to highlight here, this is the first series of the game, right? So again, I talked about feeling out your opponent, kind of seeing, you know, how are they going to align to you, right? So we've shown that we we've had to throw the ball the last few weeks and and throw it like all the time, right? This game we ended up busting for like 180 yards rushing uh, the running back alone, um, you know. So we're, we're going to show some more of our check system where this first series we're seeing how are they playing us, what are they going to do? Because we've seen a couple different things from them, right? So first play, uh, you know, we had a attack for a large sack we try to run some type of trick play got sacked right so now we're at second and 18 right this is my uh, four four guy right get the ball to him just right pick up some yards there right get back to normal down a distance we're at third and 11 right <laughs> this is one of our checks and it's like man i'm glad i checked here right because it gave us time to right we check the sideline right they're done on a knee they're relax relaxing they're resting right this uh, this check system is a great way to infuriate or frustrate a team, right? Uh, when you're they're so used to you playing super super fast, super fast, right? Ball snap, ball snap. Right? This is a way for them to have to kind of relax, and you're controlling and kind of toying with them, right? Because you know what you're gonna do. You're you're calling a dummy cadence. You know you're not snapping it, right? Which is another way we get a lot of five free yards, right? Which is great. Uh, but they look over to the sideline, right? We get our uh, our play call in. Right, but you're like you're you're playing with it, right? It's also a way for us to kind of control the clock a little bit better, right? And we do have all eleven hats look to the sideline, right? Even our offensive line, I think it's better when all eleven know what's going on, right? Haven't called the play yet, right? We're just kind of looking and talking, hey, what do we like, right? But you see all heads snap at the same time. They all saw the play, right? We all adjust, we all get ready to go, right? And again, we called inside zone here, which is a great call because their defensive ends decided to uh, bump out. Right, <laughs> and get a big gain out of it, right? We're up towards our 50 now. Right, again, on this first series here, you're going to see us, we're going to have some negative plays, right? Again, everything we do isn't uh, gold and glamour, right? Sometimes we have a bad play call. Uh, sometimes we snap it over the quarterback's head. Sometimes our center falls down, right? There's a lot of things that can go wrong, right? Now we're snapping it on the go, right? We're not waiting for it, right? We're just going, right? Here's our good tempo we're inside zone again. <laughs> Six yards, right? We'll take it. We're ahead of the stick, second and four. Great. <laughs> All right, this is our slow screen, right? Which a lot of teams, I think, um, you know, old school teams ran a lot of these slow screens to the running back. Um, you know, now all these spread guys, right? We want to throw our bubble screens or our smoke screens or rocket screens outside, right? We don't run a whole lot of these slow screens, right? This slow screen, I think, was good for nearly 18 yards a, a play when we ran it. Uh, it was a very successful play for us. Again, very special kid here at running back, right? So he kind of just uh, sets up for pass pro, right? Then leaks out underneath. Right. And uh, they just happen to sniff it out. Right. So this was again, a very good defensive team took out the best two teams in the league. Right. Defensive lineman sitting right there on it. All right. Incomplete. No big deal. We're third and four. Right. We're going to go trips to the right again and hit our inside zone. Right. Check system again. Have their alignment take a knee. Relax. Rest. Right. Our we're toying with them. Okay. Now we're, now we're going inside zone. Back keeps. Right. Get a great play. Receivers. All right, doing a decent job blocking. Could have had a little bit better out of the slot outside. Uh, but, again, we get a good gain, right? And the quarterback thinks, oh, man, I'm really good. I'm just going to let him tackle me really hard in the legs instead of running out of bounds, right? Uh, just running out of bounds there, right? Um, a question I get sometimes, yeah. Um, again, we talk about this check system's a way for us to kind of get some free fives, right? So we go uh, on a dump me cadence, right, uh, which sounds like our normal cadence. We get a lot of um, offsides by the defense, right? If we don't, sometimes we do do it twice, right? Because, again, eventually they'll tell you, well, shoot, if they don't snap it on the first go, right, they're going to look to the sideline, they're going to come, they can time it back up, right? So there's sometimes we'll do it on uh, a second check, right, just to kind of throw them off so they can't just be pinning their ears back and going, right? So this is the play I was talking about earlier, right? This kid's aligned wrong, flips over to the right way, right, and we run counter right to them, uh, and they had us outnumbered, right, which is okay, right, as long as we don't go backwards. <laughs> come back second and ten. Right, we're running inside zone. <laughs> right, again, they have a, a very good defense, very good defensive line of linebackers, right? So they're able to play this five-man box a lot of the year, right, with this guy kind of detached outside, right? And they were very successful, right? So here's another check, right? 
love the slant look out here, right? I think we called it like four plays in a row next series, right? On top of this, right? We have a huge slant window, right? Because a lot of teams bring this outside back or you go three by one, right? That outside backer, if they're three, four, a lot of times, all right, hey, I don't have a number two, right? I'm going to walk down the defensive end and I'm going to be that fourth rusher, right? Second game of the year, I think we ran inside zone to it, right? And got that cutback lane for three, three big scores, right? So we see that we have the slant window here, right? And this is the beauty of a check with me system. We can get a formation, and we can see what do we like, right? So my guys upstairs are saying, hey, coach, I think you've got this, right? Because I on the sideline can only see so much, right? I can see that this is screaming, right? But I can't make him throw it, right? Um, and when we really struggle here, again, it was cold. I don't know if he struggled to, uh, to grip the ball, right? But we've got a slant call here. Very simple, right? A slant. Throw the slant, right? This guy's coming. He's out of the picture. Safety's rolled over the top. We got one-on-one, right? Has to be able to make the catch, right? But we got to give him a chance. And again, I think we come back to it. Yep. Uh, we go same formation, same play, right? We get the same look defensively, right? And uh, this guy leaks out a running back. We get a little bubble there, right? And uh, we're able to pick up 10 yards. There's the hurdle I was telling you about. He's a big hurdle guy. Okay. Hey, uh, so first down, again, we're inside their territory, right? Good read here on RPO, right? We could have thrown the hitch there. It's a stick constant, right? We got a hitch. With a speed out, right, hits him right in the numbers, right? If he catches that runs, we get another five, six yards. Probably should have thrown the hitch. Hey, here's three by one attached, right? We're running Q stretch this way. We've got the edge, right? We're able to go. <clears throat> Good running back. All right, how about that block, right? You get a running back that's able to do this, right? Put a defensive lineman on his butt, man. I, I, that's good stuff, right? He's blocking for his guy, right? I think we throw another slant. No, we don't. We're hitting over here, right? This is our snag concept, right? Z's finding a window, good window. Got to put the ball on him, right? Um, yeah, just had a bad start, right? So there's our whole first series there. Um, you know, really just went and attacked it. Um, had a good long drive, right? Uh, where we finished on clip 15. We went for it on fourth down and didn't get it. Uh, but 13 play drive there to start the first quarter, right? Really got to feel what they were doing to us defensively. And then now when we go defense, Right, us on the offensive headsets can talk about, hey, we really like this and this and this. Right, we just got to put it on. Right, and I got to get with the quarterback. Right, um, here's just a couple other clips I think I put on here. Ah, that's just the last two. Right, um, hey, this is um, just ten clips here that kind of show the different formations we'll we'll show in a game. Right, so this is going to show ten different ones. Right here we have four receivers this side, which I showed you in our other game. Right, we've got four on three. We've got the matchup here. Um, so we're going to throw a little rocket screen to our 4-4 guy, right? Needed a better block there. That's our running back out in space, which isn't quite used to doing that. Uh, bubble might have been a little bit easier call, right? But again, we were able to get five, six yards there. Good play. All right, so here's empty with a uh, that H-back sniffer, right? So again, it's just a slightly different way for us to run. Um, this is our quarterback run series, right? So this guy becomes our kick man. We're running power uh, to it, right? So just a different alignment, something that we had not shown on film until this game. Right, so it's just another thing that they have to kind of figure out on the fly. Of how do we want to play it? <coughs> Good play there. Good run. Right, two by two. Right, again, we're trying to get lined up quick. Right, we're not ready there. Throw behind that guy, make a play. Right, nice easy game. Right, I'm the guy that'll throw the hitch thirty times a game. I know some guys get bored with it. It's like, man, we got to take a shot deep. Right, we'll throw the underneath stuff over and over. Right, three by one. <laughs> Again, just talking about the number of looks we're showing, right? Inside zone, that guy's sad. This guy's special, right? He takes off for a big touchdown there, right? It's a big rivalry game, so uh, they we're super excited, right? These are some of my favorite sets here. Right? I talked about earlier, right? Anytime you can add uh, or put two tight ends in the game, um, you know, I think that that's a huge, um, a huge advantage for us, right? So look, they're they're given an alignment that they did not use traditionally, right? This is nothing that they've shown on film because we hadn't shown this, right? So they in the in the uh, blink and I have to make this adjustment, right? And now there's a lot less second level defenders because they've had to walk linebackers up, right? So we go outside zone to the left here, right? And we've got a hat for a hat. Right? Our guys are able to seal there, right? We've got a nice run set up. Oh, man down here loving it. All right, so I guess some of these aren't going to load there, right? But um, again, we you see that we've got several different ways to line some things up there, right? Uh, the verbiage, right, for this seems kind of wordy right uh but it's really just telling our kids how they need to align right so uh for us to go wing right it's just one sign for one guy double tight was talking to two guys and they knew the sign that if we went tight right they jumped in there right so we're able to get one call right with maybe one tweak there and it gives a completely different look right 
Um, so again, that, that's really all I was going to talk about today. Um, you know, again, there's my contact info. Um, if anybody wants to, to reach out, feel free. Um, love talking ball. I've been trying to watch uh, clinics at, uh, daily as we're in this stay home time. Um, but I uh, enjoyed talking to you today. Appreciate Coach for having me on. Um, if you have any questions about anything, feel free to reach out.